Greetings everyone, my name is Duda Dutch and welcome to part 3 of the Adventure Log. Today we go on a much more focused adventure. After of course uh, helping out with the blue of the remaining blue dragon flight and uh, out of their little predicament, we, I arrived back at Dalaran to of course Again, this is recorded with the Demon Hunter, but I've kept it to the, uh, in the same order that I did it with the Paladin, most of it, to getting to the, um, well, back to Dalaran for the next step after acquiring the Order Hall. I didn't think it was that important to go through it, since you'll mostly well, be seeing, of course, the Paladin rather than the Demon Hunter. So, we got a quest from Kagar that said that apparently some kind of strange ob uh, object was... Apparently darting through the sky through a fell storm. Now that's not exactly a common thing that occurs. So we've been asked to of course find out exactly what this thing is and if possible retrieve whatever we could find. This of course uh, comes with a few obstacles and it does reveal some interesting revelations due to the plot of Legion and perhaps upcoming expansions. Cadwell and Garo explain the situation further though. Keep your wits about you. If we noticed that object shooting out from the fell storm, so too did the Legion. Look there, to the north. Gaze upon the night hold of Surama. What secrets are kept inside? Amazing. Ancient highborn ruins litter the landscape. And there, along the coast, it looks to be a very cool settlement. Fascinating. There it is. Land at the shoreline and investigate. Somewhere in those murky waters is our mysterious art. Time to get your feet wet. So, unfortunately, the object fell into the sea. This is one part that I dislike mostly about World of Warcraft in general. I never liked the swimming thing. Particularly considering it always goes so slow. So, we're, of course, having to take a little dip into the waters and find out what it is. Unfortunately, the local gill goblins, or as they're better known as the giblins, have taken their own little interest into this stuff. And they apparently are interested in what is at the bottom. Unfortunately, that means they got to it before we did. Those beasts must have dragged it into the cave. The search continues. There it is. The giant is holding it. There's only one way to separate a giant from its treasure. You know what to do. So, as usual, we of course come into this obstacle of a little sea giant who holds on to the damnable thing. Luckily, thanks to the local death knight that was happened to be in the area, it was quickly dispatched. Excellent. Hurry back to Dalaran and meet me in the chamber of the Guardian. Safe return, friend. So, what we exactly uncovered is, of course, pretty clear some kind of light-bound objects, as the description goes. But it's not exactly clear why it came here, what it does, or who the hell made it in the first place. But luckily, we do get those answers rather quickly, along with Khadgar. And uncover something that I think a lot of us were surprised to find out. Gul'dan and the Legion must be stopped. 
trust in Azeroth, I pray that this, the final plea of the Army of the Light, has reached you intact. The Thousand Years' War has reached its peak, but the nightmare is far from over. This vessel represents our ultimate sacrifice. It must reach the Prophet. He is the key. None of us asked for this burden, but it is what fate has deemed. Succeed, and the light may yet endure. Fail, and all worlds will burn. We will not fail. Terrell. Now, of all people we expected a message from, Turalian was the last one I was expecting from all of this. I swear I did not see this coming the first time I went through this, and this was a big shock. But at least we're getting some plot development, and apparently the Prophet, which is of course the Draenei leader Velen, knows about this. So, there's only one way that we can actually figure out what's going on. Best option here, head to uh, the Exodar. And uh, find the prophet could probably tell us a little bit more about this damnable thing. Good luck, champion. We make our last stand at the Vault of Lights. If you can make your way here, you will find sanctuary. Although I cannot say for how long. Did your vision foretell of this day, prophet? Did you see our coming? I bring you a message from Kil'jaeden. To be served in the blood of your people. Justice will be met! A coward's death to these traitorous Draenei! Mar their corpses, so the living may see the fate that awaits them! Fate has delivered you to us in this most dire time, hero. While I sense that your mission is urgent, if we do not push back these invading demons, we will all perish. This barrier protecting my people requires all of my energy and focus. I am afraid you must venture into the demon-infested halls alone. Please, search for survivors and eliminate the Legion invasion point portals that you find across the Exodar. You must hurry. I do not know how much longer I can keep this barrier active. Break your bodies upon the Prophet's barrier, minions. Soon it shall fall, and with it, the hopes of the Draenei. Your will be done, Master. So it seems that, as usual, our timing is impeccable because we just arrived as it would seem that the Legion had, of course, particularly Kill Jaden has decided, well, now that I'm here anyway, I might as well just get my uh, payback on this because Kill Jaden has a little bit of a history with the Draenei and the Prophet Villain directly. So they, uh, he decided to go for a straight attack on the Exodar itself. Probably a bit against the orders of Sargeras, but you know how it is. So, let's first... Uh, I just want to one th clear one thing up. I guess they st uh, the voice actor that used to do Garrosh Hellscream, who is now, of course, dead. I mean, the character, not the voice actor. I guess they still wanted to give him a role, so they j but he has the kind of voice that works, you know, with the villainous and vindictive and angry type, so they just decided to stick him with this voice. So, we arrive at the Exeter, finding that it's, of course, crawling with demons, and... Well, there's a reason for that. You see, 
Again, this is going to go into some old lore. This is, of course, not uh, described in any of the previous games. Kiljaden has a bit of a grudge against Vela. Now, this goes back about 13,000 years, long before even the implosion of the Well of Eternity and the War of the Ancients. Uh, you see, the Prophet at the... At that time, the Draenei still lived on their original world called Argus, where they kind of, you know, were pretty much uh, the guys who were in charge. You know, kind of like what, what humans are to, well, kind of, well, you know, the other mortal races were on Azeroth. So, at this time already, at this point already, Sargeras had already formed the Burning Legion. But he himself was already personally, you know, scouring out the place, finding more planets to, you know, wreck. He had, of course, his eye on certain keen planets. Now, anyone who's read the Chronicle knows that, of course, there is some reasoning to it. I'm not going to spoil too much to it, but it basically comes down to that. So, um, the fact is that uh, Sargeras was going to be busy with that, but he needed someone to keep his, you know, his Legion minions on on track because Ilkol, of course, he originally imprisoned them and broke them out. These guys have never really been the loyal type, so he decided that he needed beings with immense power that could keep them in check. And he found a race called the Eredar that seemed, you know, particularly suitable for the job. They were highly keen with magic, and they proved to be also physically quite impressive. So, Sargeras went there and communed psychically, I guess, you know, telepathically, with their leaders at the time that were three of them called Archimonde, Kiljaden, and Velen, who he offered this, you know, a glorious future for, him, for, his, for, him, for them and their people. Now, this sounded like, you know, a god sent to them. So, they were going to be something even greater. They would practically ascend to a form of godhood. Now, Kiljaden and Archimonde were kind of on board with this idea. Uh, uh, Venlon has still needed a little bit of convincing and he'd be thinking about it. At that time, he actually received a vision from the Naru telling him that that was a bad idea because it actually results in him... Uh, because he actually gets a vision from Naru telling him this is a really bad idea. It may sound great, but it's going to bite you in the ass later down the line because you get turned into these horrific monsters with nothing but the intention of destroying everything you find. And Velen is not on board of that. He's a very morally strong character, and he's just not a big fan of that entire idea. So what happens, he actually uh, has convinced many of uh, similar other uh, like-minded individuals of the Eridor to actually you to turn against... Uh, to well, reject this offer and instead live as they do. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to Velen, Archimon and Kiljaden have already gone on board with the plan and have actually decided to already accept Sargeras' gift. This unfortunately means that Velen is of course considered the opposition here and has actually continued to be a betrayer because these three used to be pretty strong together, particularly where, you know, they were like, you know, sort of band of brothers idea. Not soldiers, but, you know, as leaders. So, particularly Kiljaden and Velen. So, the what could be considered as Velen's betrayal kind of hit hard to home for Kiljaden particularly. Who, of course, was really not happy that Velen decided to oppose them and they eventually were able to escape from their homeworld. Kiljaden took a particular... Uh, you know, vendetta to this, and he made it his, his solemn... He swore to himself that he would see the Draenei, which, are, which is a... which is Eridar for exiles, which the Draenei are, because they exiled themselves from their own homeworld, and the Eridar is still the original. They became the exiles, and he swore to himself and towards Velen that he would hunt them down and wipe them all out. He tried this... He's been hunting them across the galaxy for, well, 10,000 for more than 10,000 years. And that has occurred on many occasions. Every time, though, they were able to slip slip away. Until, of course, the scenario that, came, that occurred on Draenor, on which Kil'jaeden then employed the orcs and turned them against the Draenei, nearly wiped them out again. They made their escape, came to Azeroth, and they've been, you know, chilling out here until today when the Legion invades. So now this Legion commander guy, 
comes in and wants to kick the crap out of just about every Draenei that he can find here. Their entire point is actually two stage. First of all, wiping out all the Draenei they can find here. Second of all, stopping us from getting to a certain point because they might have noticed, of course, the lightbound object and they may even know that there is a connection between that object and what we what we came here to do. So they get in and they are trying to do. So the very basic premises here, we need to wipe out some demons, uh find some of the local citizens and get them out because well, they don't want to die either, which I can kind of get behind and we need to uh, of course cut off their reinforcements by uh, you know, shutting down their portals. We thin their numbers. I find a little rare spawn along the way. Got rid of it. And from there on out, it was back to, to Velen for some, you know, needed information. Which really helped out, by the way. Because after that, we finally move on and find exactly out what what it is that we have with us. What its purpose is. And who can, and how Velen and his people can help us probably uncover whatever information is located within this object. I fear we have but a moment, hero. Rakish is still here, somewhere, and he must be stopped if my people are to find peace again. I know that you have ventured far to find me, and have brought with you a dire message. In your possession is an object of great importance. May I see it? Not all who wander are lost. Mother of light! I... I'm sorry, I... I did not know. Champion, we have to go, now! I will explain on the way there. Inform me when you are prepared to leave, but please hurry. Will you join our... What you have brought to me is known as Light's Heart. It is the sentient core of the Naru Prime, Zira. Locked away within the core is wisdom, knowledge, crucial to our battle against the burning... I can't Eden. attack that target. Yet only a Naru born of Zira is capable of unlocking the core. This is why you were sent here. This is the true purpose of the Burning Legion's invasion of the Exodar. The last of Zira's line, Oros, sits unguarded in the heart of the Exodar. If they destroy Oros, the information within Light's heart will be lost forever. For a prophet, you are doing a very poor job of making predictions. Ha! <laughs> it makes music when you beat it. What a delightful creature. I will enjoy ending its existence. Light, damn him! I will guide us to the heart of the vessel. Stay within my protective barrier as I cleanse the fell taint from the pathway. So... We find out, uh, by the way, Velen is just being the shining beacon of holy flippin' shit and what he's doing over here. And he's just making his way, he's helping us getting through this crap. So we find out that that thing, that line-bound object, is literally like the heart of a Naru Prime? This is some big things they're throwing at us here. Blizzard is not. It's pulling out all the stops here. I gotta give them credit that that's pretty impressive, that... Apparently, these Naru even have, like, prime examples of themselves. Either way, we find now there's only one left of them that can actually help us out. There's just one little problem. Rakish, the, the big bad guy with Garros' voice actor behind it, is after this damnable thing. That means that he wants it. He definitely doesn't want us to get our hands on it. So, it seems that we got the upper hand. Unfortunately, of course... Things in this expansion aren't meant to go in the, you know, the happy way. And 
he plays, you know, the smug kind of figure. So he, we think we've got the upper hand. We think we've got him cornered. Turns out, of course, that doesn't exactly happen the way that we hoped it would. So he's a bit of a dick about it. So what happens is that one of those just... There it is. Dying machine shows up. And I'm not sure if exactly it kills the damnable thing or it may have contained it. I'm not sure. But they've got it. And, well, it's just a bad thing to happen. And, well, we gotta get it back. Or stop it. Something. I don't know. So now we need to fight our way against this thing. And luckily, two of our buddies show up at the exact time. And they're going to help us out take care of this little problem. Which, of course, is in general a good idea, considering that this guy's just being a prick about it. Uh, this guy doesn't do exactly... It, this is not much of a... It's not really what you would call a real big boss mechanic, but it does some interesting thing, and it gets to show off some more demon hunting skills. Still, of course, they don't have a very wide selection of abilities, but they've got enough tricky and uh, nice little tricks to make it at least an interesting sort of uh, class to play. So... This Rakish guy seems to have a very vindictive nature to it. Towards, uh, well, Venlin and everything else. It's, it's just being a dick about it. But the Eredar have always been dicks about this. Because, well, you know, they, were, they just really are not happy about what happened, of course. So, uh, you fight this thing, and it seems okay. This is going quite well. Doesn't seem to be much of a problem. Unfortunately... It seems, though, there might be more hinted towards this particular guy's intentions than we might have figured out. As turns out, that with this little bit of information, that really just brings the shock out to everybody. So, that was, so enjoy the revelation if you haven't seen it. But if you play World of Warcraft, you've probably been through this. So, this shouldn't come to a surprise to most of you. Kill Rakesh! Stop! Please! I don't have a target. The last waking you you was not a bad. final agonizing. Then moment. I must stop Before you! Man turns to ash and cast into oblivion. I welcome it. You asked me if I foresaw this day, child. I. I did. And until this moment, I did not understand. In the I need to target something first. Now, just the whisper of a memory. I had a son. On the day of his birth, a vision came to me. In that vision, I saw myself weeping as I held a dying Eredar in my arms. His skin fell pocked and battle scarred, like yours. But I buried that vision after Kill Jaden took my family from me, and for eons let it be lost in the darkest recesses of my being. Now, finally, as I hold you in my arms, I understand. There is nothing left here for you, champion. Take Light's heart and return to Khadgar. Tell him... Tell him that the Light died here this day. Farewell. So it turns out that Rakish, the guy who seems to be very determined to killing the Draenei, happens to be villain's son now don't get me wrong being you know a demon kind of guy is being a dick you know you're an evil kind no of figure but that is just sadistic i mean even for me the whole revelation everything else is a revelation that could have been expected but villain's own son has been tortured and turned into one of those things and the entire point the reason why kill jaden did that was so that he would go out and kill both all of the Draenei as well as every last 
one of them, of course, and kill Vela. That's supposed to be the goal. You gotta be some kind of sick mind to come up with something like that. But you could be saying, well, he's a demon. That didn't start out like this. You gotta have some sickening things in your head to come up with something like that. So that is just, that's not just evil, that's just cruel beyond anything that I can imagine that anyone would do. So this is really one of the most bittersweet victories you can get in this entire expansion. Or at least that I've ever tasted because yes, we got, we survived and we got that thing. But we just killed one of villain's son and as you can definitely see, the guy is depressed about it. But afterwards, of course, we need to take the victory we can, we can get. We acquired the Light's Heart, and Khadgar decided, of course, the best place to keep it is within our Order Hall, which makes sense considering some of the most powerful individuals of that particular class, as we should say, of that order, are located there. So we take the victory we can get and put it there. Hopefully things turn out better afterwards. Anyway, this has been the wrap-up for this little part of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this part of the Adventure Log. Uh, this next one will be, will be coming as soon as possible, which will mean more Azuna content and back to the Paladin halfway through. Still, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little adventure log. Until then, I hope you guys will continue to stick around. Please leave a like if you want to be a good guy. And until then, I will see you in the next one. And then, adios and uh, bye bye!